Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm uh, actually doing a little quick project over here on my Kearney Tracker Model 3H horizontal milling machine. And uh, when I got this machine, it was in really good shape, all things considered, but there were just a few little odds and ends on here that just needed a little bit of attention. And one of the parts that was just absolutely missing was a little handle that goes over here on the side of the machine. Now, it wasn't a super critical part because basically what this handle is used for is to engage the feeds. This handle down here on the end does the exact same thing, uh, but there was a handle here where you could control it from this side of the machine. One of the really cool features on this machine compared to the, a lot of the other uh, Model H machines that are out there is that it has side controls. You can actually, uh, there's a crank down here on this side uh, that allows you to, to move the table in all three axes. It has power feeds and stuff. Of course, you got a handle down here where you can crank the, the table. So you can completely control this machine standing over on the side. And the, one of the things that it needed was to be able to engage that feed. Uh, I didn't want to have to come all the way around to the front of the machine to engage it over here. So a little handle was on here. And this is the handle that was missing. I was able to find one of these. Now, um, this handle, I actually talked to my friend Ron Grundy up in Milwaukee, uh, who used to work for K&T. We've done a video on him in the past and talk about his career at K&T. But uh, Ron has in, in his shop a lot of parts for a lot of these older current tracker machines that he acquired along the way, and uh, he sells a few parts here and there. I asked him about this handle, and he got to digging around, and sure enough, he was able to dig up this part that I needed uh, and send it on down to me. And today, what I want to do is I want to get this mounted over on the machine. And while that looks like it'd be simple on the surface. I'm expecting a few little issues in here, particularly the fact that there is a uh, tapered pin that is drilled through here and matches up with a hole in the spindle. And the problem you run into anytime you get a, a part that doesn't match the original is, is that the chances of these holes lining up are slim to none because they basically just came over to the machine and would have drilled that in there and put a reamer in there. And, you know, it's not something that's standardized. They had a jig or something where everyone was exactly the same. So we're going to have to deal with that and uh, figure out what we got to do. Also, this handle, while overall is in good shape, uh, it's been beat on a little bit. And I want to do a little bit of massaging to that before we put it on there and uh, try to minimize some of that. I can tell the holes aren't round. Uh, we got a few little rough spots on this side that I want to get off of here first just to, because that might interfere with the operation of it, make it a little bit stickier to, to, to use um, and so on. So we're going to do some of that. So quick project. Let's get her knocked out and let's get this handle mounted on the machine. Give you guys a Quick close up, here's the handle and um, you can see some, or it looks like it's been hammered on or beat on up here around um, the front here. Looks like someone may have had to have driven this on with a hammer at some point and beat on the top of it there. Also around these uh, tapered pin holes, looks like it's been beat on, that's not round. And then on this side here, um, again, just some dings where, uh, it's, it's not as, as smooth as it should be. This is a surface that will go up against another surface. So I want to get all of that stuff off of there and some pretty fairly large uh, dings on. I'm going to start with just a file and hit that and then probably go to a stone after that. So, so I've just got a file over here and what I'm going to do is just See if we can knock that off. There's one little ding right there. It's kind of sharp. I'm just going to take a file here and knock that over a little bit. That 
feels a lot, lot better. I think I'm gonna finish this up on a precision ground flat stone. And that feels real good. I'm gonna flip it over and use the finer side now. Yeah. I think we got that straightened out. All right. The rest of the dings we'll just have to live with. Uh, but one thing I do want to check is uh, it looks like this is mushroomed over a little bit on the top. I'm going to see if I can maybe run a reamer up through that just to get it back to the original size so we don't have to beat it on over there if the sizes don't match up. Let me get a quick measurement, find out what size that hole is, and see if we got a reamer that will work. Just going to use some calipers here and it's half inch that's what i was thinking it was and i know i got a half inch reamer let me go get that and we'll ream that hole out real quick so i've got a half inch chucking reamer here in my uh drill most of the mushroom is on this uh, side over here so what i think i'm going to do is we'll start by just coming in here and use this side kind of as a guide and then hopefully just come right out the other side that's my game plan. Let's see what happens here. Yep. Well, I'm gonna have to tighten up my chuck. There we go. So that should have opened that up and it definitely had a big burr on it. And let's go over to the mill and I mean, well, first thing I want to do is figure out what size drill the small end of this is. And uh, then we'll go over there and put it on there and see if we get lucky and these holes line up. I doubt we will. Let's, uh, let's see, see how our luck holds up. So here's our handle and it starts up on there, but it's still a little bit tight. And I know that's half inch. I suspect that my, this uh, shaft here has got some dings. I can see where right in there, there's some scarring in there. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little, some emery cloth here and just kind of start off real lightly going around this and uh, see if that takes off any, any kind of little burrs or something on there. Let's see what happens now. Still a little stiff. I'm getting really close. Having to hit this with some more emery here to get everything down to the right size. But I think we're right at going on there. One more pass around this thing and I think it's gonna fit. It almost went up on there last time. All right. There's our knob. Oh yeah. And I'm kind of pulling this shaft out a little bit to get it all the way up on there. That last little bit is giving me a little bit of a trouble. Let me see what my hole looks like. I see light through there. And it looks like it needs to bump up on there just a touch farther. So I think what I'm going to do is go grab my lead hammer or maybe one of my brass hammers and uh, knock that on there a little bit farther. All right. Oh yeah, that went right up on there. Take a look back through here again. I know you guys can't see this, but I can see it through that hole. And I'm kind of amazed. I think it's going to line up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a tapered reamer and I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and, and ream it fresh to make sure I got a perfect match, but it's really close right now. Um, let me just figure out what re reamer I need and we'll do that. So I've got a drill bit going all the way through this. It's a little bit rough. I know that I need a 532nds hole through here, and this one's starting. This will be the size to kind of get my reamer uh, to go all the way through. So what I want to do is I'm just going to take this 532nds drill bit, and we're going to run it through that hole and just get a good clean hole all the way through. All right. 
and you saw it kind of self-align a little bit. That worked out really good. And the next thing, this is a tapered reamer. And this is a number two tapered reamer. And this one is for chucking. It's for running in a, in a drill or something like that. And what I'm going to do with it is we're going to come through and we're going to just run this through. And this should give us a, the right taper for a tapered pin. And we basically just want to go through just far enough to clean up all the way through. So I can feel it cutting a little bit. Just make sure everything's lined up like it should be. I think that's going to work just fine. Now I need to find a number two tapered pin to put in that hole. And I got a collection of those over here. Hopefully I got the right one. And these are just different length pins. And huh, that one there, I think that one's going to be perfect. By the time I tap that in there, it's going to be just right. Let me uh, see what happens here. Yeah, it's uh, sticking out both sides. Look at there. I got a whole lot luckier on that than I ever thought I would. Um, let's try it out. I think we're good. I'm gonna finish driving this in with just a regular hammer. I don't wanna, I wanna make sure it goes in as far as it'll go. And that's about flush right there. Sticking out a little bit proud on that side. If I want to, I can come in there and cut that off flush or I might just leave it. It's not a pinch point or anything. It'll make it actually drive out, easier to drive out if I ever need to. So I think we're good. Okay, that was again, a lot easier than I was anticipating. So before I do try it out. I'm just going to show you. This is the tapered pin or another one just like it. This is a number two by inch and a half. And this is tapered. It's smaller on this end than it is on this end. So it'll only go in so far. It'll lock in place. These tapers are extremely strong. And um, once you lock them in, I, I mean, you can take a hammer and knock them back out. But they stay in place really, really well. And I know in a lot of more modern machines, they use uh, spring pins or roll pins, some people call them. They're hollow on the inside. These are solid. They're a lot more solid. Uh, I think they kind of lost favor because they're a little bit more difficult to get out. They're really good going in, but more difficult to get out. And it's also more aggravating because you got to have a, a reamer to ream it, not just a regular drill bit to just drill it. So there's an extra step involved, but kind of the old school way. I like these. Uh, I see them a lot on this old machinery. All right, let's try it out now. All right, so let's uh, take a look here. Again, we got our handle down here. This uh, adjusts the feet of the table. I'm not gonna turn the machine on. I can look at it right here and just see what's going on. But uh, if you want the table to go uh, in that direction, you move the handle that way. If you want to go the other way, you move the handle back and then the center is neutral. And as you can see down here, this handle is following suit. And that's exactly what we wanted for it to do. So again, if I'm over here, using the uh, side controls of the mill to control everything. I got my, well, I got my table in and out on this handle. There's a crank. It actually pulls out. I got two choices. One of them moves the table in and out. One of them moves it up and down. So um, let me see if I can show you that. So you can see there, it's moving the handle on the other side. I'm controlling that from the side. I come over here to the other one. Should control it up and down and it is I don't think the handles turning it's, it's rotating inside of there but got side controls I got rapid controls and I can control the table from over here as well that's the whole purpose of this is to give you side controls where you can control the entire machine from the back side which may sound kind of uh, counterintuitive but if you ever run one of these machines you'll often find yourself standing over here while it's running and you need to kind of be seeing what's going on this side of the machine so it's really a nice feature to have these side controls uh, on some of these uh, larger mills. Just a close up shot of the side controls. I know that was out of the view in the last uh, one where I was actually cranking on them, but you got the handle here. This handle is uh, removable. It's 
kind of tighten that front one that uh, raises and lowers the table. Pull it on out, but it'll go in this uh, back one here as well. And uh, get these handles lined up. There you go. And these are for your rapid traverses. So if I wanted to rapid it back and forth, I got rapids on all three axes right there. Uh, really handy feature. On those side controls, uh, they were pretty much standard on the Model K uh, mills. The Model H's, particularly on the smaller ones, I don't think they were standard. Uh, I think they were an option. I think on the 3H it was an option. You could get them with or without the side controls. I may be wrong on that, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, but fortunately, this mill here uh, has them on there. And another thing that's kind of confusing about K and T machines is they had their Model K and they had their Model H's, and uh, they were basically the same mill. The biggest difference between them was the the speeds that it would run. The Model K mills tended to have a, a faster high end speed on them, where the Model H mills didn't have quite as fast as a high end, but a little bit lower of a low end. So uh, uh, that was the biggest difference. In fact, uh, really the, the main castings of the machines were identical between the Model Ks and the H. Uh, there were some differences on the insides of them uh, that made them a little bit different, but that was probably the biggest difference between the, the two. Uh, and the other thing that's confusing about the, the Model Ks and the Model Hs is, is that uh, this is a uh, 3H, but a 3H, would be equivalent to a 2K. So the numbers didn't match up. You would think that uh, uh, if it was a number three size mill in a Model H, it would be a number three size mill in a Model K. But for whatever reason, that's not the way K and T did it. Never understood that. I've asked some people about that. Nobody has a good answer for me as to why they did it. But that is what they, what they did. But anyway, our goal today was to get this handle mounted on here. Uh, success. And, you know, I don't know of anything else on this machine that was uh, standard on it that I don't have on it. I think I have rounded up the couple of few little missing parts and pieces that I had on this machine now. Plus, I've picked up a lot of the accessories for it as well and really have a well-tooled uh, uh, milling machine. One thing I want to do soon is I want to uh, uh, take this uh, universal head off and get the um, shaper head, uh, the slotting attachment they called it. Some people call it a jumping jack, but it basically was a shaper attachment. I've got one and I want to put it on here and try it out. So uh, maybe while I'm over the Christmas break when I got some time and have a little bit extra time in the shop, we can get that on here and try it out and play around with it. I'm really kind of anxious to, uh, to see how that works. Uh, but with that, for today, that is going to be a wrap on this episode. As always, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are appreciated. And uh, with that, guys, we'll catch you on the next video.